Okay, on assignment 4A, here's a help guide if you're struggling. Example R number 1. We have 3x to the 3rd, y to the 4th, to the 2nd, times y to the 5th. So we have a factor of 3, a factor of x, a factor of y, then a second factor of y. So 3, 1 times 2 is a 2. Now x, 3 times 2 is 6. There's two exponents for y. We take 4 times 2, that's 8, plus 5 is 13. They all come straight over because they're all positive. And then I can simplify the 3 to the second. 3 times itself is 9. So 9 times x to the 6 times y to the 13. Okay, number 2. We've got 8x to the negative third power. So you've got a factor of 8 and a factor of x. 8's to the 1, but 1 times negative 3 is negative 3. Okay, now, those are negative exponents. They can't just come straight over. They have to be moved down here. So now, they're now positives. I can simplify 8 to the third. 8 times 8 times 8 is 512. You put the 512 where the 8 to the third used to be. And then we need a 1 to cover the top of the fraction. Okay, number 3. We have 4 over x to the third times 2x to the fourth over y to the second to the third. So, make that a line. So, on top, you got a factor of 4, a factor of 2, a factor of x, but you have factors on the bottom. You have x and y on the bottom. So, 4, 1 times 3 is 3. 1 times 3 is 3 on the 2. Now, x, 4 times 3 is 12. Now, with the x on the bottom to the 1, but you still got to take the 1 times the 3. 3. Y is to the 2, but you got to take 2 times 3, that's 6. Now, see if you can cross anything out on the, from the bottom. X, the X you can, because you can minus 3 then from the top. When you cross out the bottom, you minus it from the top. The Y's got to stay, because there's no Y up on top to cross out. So all of these powers are positive, okay? So they all just come straight over, 4 to the 3rd, where they're at. Keep them where they're at. Now that y straight over. Okay, and I can simplify these two. 4 to the 3rd would be 4 times 4 times 4. That's 64. Put it where the 4 to the 3rd was. 2 to the 3rd, 2 times 2 times 2 is 8. Times x to the 9th, y to the 6th. And you cross those out. 512, you need to multiply those. 512 times x to the 9th over y to the 6th. Okay, number 4. We've got 10 over the parentheses 2x to the negative 3rd. The parentheses is just on bottom. It does not surround the 10. So on top we have a factor of 10, and on bottom we have a factor of 2 and a factor of x. So 10's to the 1, and I get to write 1 down because it's not in parentheses. 2's to the 1, but you need to take 1 times negative 3. X is to the 1. You also got to take that. Now, this one comes straight over. These two have to come up here so we can write them as positives. I can simplify those two. So 10 to the 1st is just 10. 2 to the 3rd. 2 times 2 times 2 is 8. Times X to the 3rd. And then 10 times 8 is 80. 80 times x to the third is the answer. <coughs> okay, number five. Scientific notation, 9.3 times 10 to the power of 16 times, if there's, not, if there's nothing in between the parentheses, it's times 3 times 10 to the negative 7th. So we times the 9 point, multiplication is commutative. I can do it in any order I want. It would make sense to do 9.3 times 3, and then take 10 to the 16th times 10 to the negative 7th. Okay, so 9.3 times 3 is 27.9. So I can write that down. 
times 10 to figure out what powers on the 10 and multiplication you add the powers. 16 plus negative 7 is 9. But you have two digits in front of the decimal. In scientific notation, you can only have one. So I move it backwards 1. And when I move backwards, I add 1 to the power. So it's two points because I'm making it smaller here, so I make this bigger times 10 to the 10th. Okay, number 6. We have 3.5 times 10 to the 6 divided by 5 times 10 to the negative 8. So here we divide 3.5 divided by 5 and then 10 to the 6 divided by 10 to the negative 8. Now instead of multiplying, we're going to divide. So 3.5 divided by 5 is 0 0.7 times 10. Now you need to cross out the bottom and you subtract from the top. So 6 minus negative 8 is 14. Okay, Because it's really like 6 plus 8 when you minus a negative. But you can't have a 0 in front of the decimal. Move it forward. Now you have 7.0 and when you move it forward you need to minus 1. And that's 10 to the 13th. Okay, then the story problem on this assignment. <clears throat> a population of 100 frogs in a pond increases at a rate of 22% per year. How many frogs will there be in five years? So you're figuring out how many frogs there are going to be. So the units in bold, you have frogs and years. Years is X, frogs is Y. Years times always X. So per frogs per year... Well, there's, it doesn't say there's a frogs per year. It's 22. It's a percent, okay? So plus 22 percent. Percent means, again, we need to do the A times B to the X power equals Y. You make an exponential function out of it. Because when you have a, a initial amount and it rises by a percent, you would multiply by something over and over. Okay, now A, B, X and Y. Remember, these two mean the same thing. So if Y is frogs, frogs is A too. Okay, A is the frogs you started with. You started with 100, but you don't know how many you ended with. That's the answer down here. And then B is your percentage, okay? But you can't just put 22. you got to take 100% and add 22% to it. That's 122%. So move it twice to the left. That's 1.22. So X is years, and we have five years. Okay. So now you can write all this out. You take 100 times 1.22 to the fifth power equals Y. Okay, put 270. There'll be 270 frogs approximately.